Hello, my name is Grant from Makers Vlog, and today I want to talk about social media, uh, YouTube platforms or video platforms, streaming platforms, and the like, and security around them. Um, so a lot of people work um, as either social media influencers, content creators, streamers, all that good stuff. And for a lot of them, their entire income revolves around these accounts, you know, like I said, Twitch, YouTube, Instagram, all that, you know, their lives and their, their employment are focused on those accounts. And if those accounts were brought down for any reason, whether that be they were hacked or, or whatever, and they lose control of those accounts, you know, their their livelihood, their, their job essentially is on hold until they can get that fixed. And so I wanted to talk about the security around those accounts and little things that you can do to, to protect them that, that helps quite a bit and um, also why you might be a target a lot of these um, a lot of people think oh you know this this will never happen to me and I want to show why especially if you're a social media influencer or content creator you know if you're putting yourself out there on the internet you could be a, a valuable target to an attacker um, so I, I did a quick poll I, would, I reached out to a few um, internet personalities no one huge I don't think um, but you know reasonable sized you know enough that they're making a living off these things and I, I reached out to them and says you know how how security aware are you at the minute you know is, is there anything you're doing here's a few things you know are, are you doing these um, just as a, as a as a gaze to see who who's doing what you know maybe maybe people are more secure than, than what I give them credit for um, th the answers didn't really surprise me they came back and a lot of them were you know, not a lot. I, you know, I use the same password everywhere, or you know, I do this and this, but not really on this. Um, and in fact, one person even replied back saying, "I think my password's secure. Here it is. Is it a good one?" <laughs> and I had to explain that, well, you know, regardless of how good that password was, it's now not because you've just shown me it. Um, no, I'm not. You know, I'm not here to dis disparage anyone. Like, you know. I, I'm not blaming anyone for not being security aware and it is not that person's fault. Okay. I mean, a wee bit sharing your password with someone's a bit silly, but you know, if you're not in the field of security and it's not something you'd ever think about, you know, you can understand why this could be a completely alien concept to someone and why they wouldn't think um, that as an issue. So like I say, I'm, I'm not surprised at all that, um, you know, the, the, the level of security isn't, isn't there. Um, for a lot of these people because it's not something you think of you know if you, you get an idea and you think I'm gonna make a Instagram account for this or I'm gonna make a YouTube channel talking about this or I'm gonna stream this game or, or this thing um, you know security isn't isn't you know at the top of your list it's probably doesn't even crack the top 10 you know you're worried about getting your your audio sorted your, your the camera good all, all that stuff all that setup um, so it's not something that you think about but it, it really it really should be um, so I've done I've done a, a video already on passwords, um, which if you've got a good secure password, you're way ahead of the game already. So I'll link that um, in one of these corners. Um, and and the password is is sort of your first stepping stone into these um, accounts, whether that be Instagram, YouTube, etc. If you have a good strong password um, that's not used anywhere else, that's unique to that, you're you're going to be um, ahead of the game. But a strong password isn't necessarily um, the only thing that you need. Um, as I said, a lot of people get putting their lives out on the internet. Um, you, you can be susceptible to what is called a social engineering attack. So just having a strong password doesn't necessarily mean that your account is 100% secure. There are other things that an attacker can do. But if you have a strong password, it definitely stops uh, opportunistic attackers, which a lot of people or a lot of attackers will be. Um, being you know out there as a as a social internet person, um, you, you are more likely to be actually targeted, not as a as let's see if some if, see if they can get an easy account, but you know somebody maybe watches your channel or looks at your content, you know you, you can get effectively a stalker um, who tries to you know goes into more in depth attacks just because they want to target you. So with that, there are other things that you can do. Another big one is MFA or multi-factor authentication. A lot of you will probably have already used this in some degree. Um, if you have a Google a Gmail account, you'll know every time you sign on from a different browser, 
you, you get a ping on your phone, Google freaking out saying, was this you? That's multi-factor authentication, effectively. That's them checking and say, okay, you've just logged in, you've just tried to do this, you've tried to do that. Is this you? Just an extra check to make sure that it is in fact you that's um, trying to do whatever it is you're trying to do. And most social media um, platforms, streaming platforms, video platforms will have some form of multi-factor um, capability and I really recommend you turn it on. Now, how to actually enable it, it's usually fairly simple if you just Google whatever platform it is. So Instagram, how to turn on MFA, uh, YouTube, how to turn on M MFA, Twitch, how to turn on MFA, etc. Um, I, I believe Twitch actually pushes you to do it by default, uh, which is really good. Um, because it means then that not only does an attacker need to know your password, but they also then need to have your phone or your um, control of the app or whatever it is that you're using to do multi-factor. And it's it's another big barrier for an attacker to try and get around. Because it means even if, say, you use a slightly insecure password, something that, you know, it's not fantastic, you've, you've used it elsewhere, it's, you know, maybe it's the name of your dog or your child or whatever, um, even if an attacker gets that and figures that out and you've got MFA, it's a barrier that they then have to have to get around. So they just they just don't immediately have the keys to the kingdom, as it were. So MFA is definitely a big one to get um, turned on, and it can be a bit annoying. Um, I I was recently on the on the back end of that where I lost my phone and it had my MFA on it, and I could not get into so many of my accounts because they were all MFA related and I didn't have a backup and whole big thing. Whenever you're setting up the MFA, they will all have an option to take a backup of either a recovery code or something like that. Do it. <laughs> Do it and save it somewhere that you're going to remember. Uh, because, yeah, if you lose your phone, it can be a pain in the ass to try and, and get those accounts back into your control. But that leads me on to social engineering, and that is by attacking the people. Okay, so in a really secure system, say you have an account, we'll say we'll keep it Instagram and you have a really strong password and you have multi-factor authentication on and it's it's really really secure the easiest way to get that account is to attack the people i.e you or the customer support for instagram or whatever account it is because you know they don't want you locked out of your account uh, the people at instagram that is and say you lose your password or like myself you know, you've lost your phone you don't have your multi-factor anymore yeah, I was able to get those accounts back and the way I was able to get them back was by supplying information to uh, the various platforms to prove that I was me and some of those checks aren't fantastic and um, some of them are just a case of yeah sure give me your address and what's your date of birth uh, sure there you go that's the multi-factor turned off and you know it's not great but you can understand that the, the company wants you to still be able to use your account you know, they don't want to make life difficult for you. But the problem being is the easier they make it for you, the easier it is for an attacker. Um, some other platforms, you know, I had to send them a picture of, of my ID and you know, today's date and shit like that to prove that I was me, um, which is which is a really good um, security level, but a pain in the ass for me because it took ages. So social engineering is the art of effectively gathering that information about you so say i was trying to attack a youtube person what i would do is i would go and gather as much information about that youtube person as possible the email address uh, date of birth where they live anything at all anything you can grab about that person and then use that as a method to pretend to either be them or something close to them and get access to the accounts that way. So, you know, ring up YouTube or Instagram or send them an email and be like, oh, hey, sorry, I forgot my password. I was trying to reset it, but it's going to this email. It's an old email address. I don't really use it anymore. Don't know the password for it. You know, can you help me out? And nine times out of 10, they'll say, yeah, no problem. Sure. What's your, um, you know, what's your date of birth? You know, live, social security numbers, shit like that to prove that, that I am this person. And it's usually quite easy to get that information, especially for someone who is a you know an internet personality. So you're an influencer on Instagram, YouTube, all that. You know your your lives are on the internet, and um, for the most part, and so it's it's easy to gather this information, and 
you know use it to to attack uh, someone's accounts now the way to defend against this is is to effectively do um, what is the need to know basis whenever you're putting something online think is this something other people need to know um, <laughs> but I was I was on a uh, uh, I, I was doing some training a while ago and uh, they were talking about the need to know basis and at the end of one of the tests they stood up and they gave the best answer and the most stupid answer they received and they were both the same the stupidest answer and the best answer were both the same and for the need to know basis this person put in uh, wrote down if they need to know then they need to know if they don't need to know then they don't need to know and that was their description of the need to know basis and I mean it's correct but yeah still a bit silly but that, that's um, that's something that should be considered whenever you're sharing stuff online is does this need to be out there and the reason being is that the less information you put out about yourself online, the the harder it is for an attacker to actually get that information. Now, it's not impossible. Definitely, I'm sure if you're like myself, you've been online since you were a kid. And um, although it was dial-up um, with AOL. Yes, I know I don't look that old, but it was dial-up. Um, but you've been online for most of your life and you weren't secure, you know, whenever you first went online. So there could be information buried in some dark corner of the internet about you, you know. It's hard to clean that up but the less you expose the more difficult it is for these attackers to find now for those of you who are instagram youtube facebook whatever personalities and you, you essentially vlog your entire life that's difficult to do because that's what people come to see they come to see your life and it can be difficult to hide um, that information but for that there is there is a solution and this applies to a lot of people and it can be useful even if you don't put your um, self on the internet and that is to lie effectively so whenever you set up an account with somewhere or even change the, the current account information you know change change the date of birth if, if they don't need to you know if they don't need it accurately for you know whatever purposes you know if they need it for like banks and details and stuff like that they probably need to know your actual date of birth but for likes of you know a uh, a YouTube account or a Facebook account or Instagram, you know if your date of birth is off by a few days, they're probably not gonna they're not gonna care they're not gonna know about it. But it can help stop an attacker because an attacker might gather some information about you, get your actual date of birth, and whenever they try and reset the account, that account, your real date of birth doesn't match the one on the account, and so they can't get in. You do also have to keep track of this information yourself, and um, I. Again, I've spoken about um, password managers before. You know, they're a good place to store notes as well about that. So you could have, you know, a little note about your Instagram. I've put X Y Z um, in as my uh, date of birth in Instagram, and so you have a record of it somewhere, or write it down. Again, I've said this before. Um, if you're in a home environment, you know, there's nothing wrong with writing something in a book and sticking it in a drawer. You know, if someone breaks into your house, they're not going to be looking for passwords or you know what you've lied about on Instagram. You know, they're going to be stealing your TV, really. Now, this can also apply to security questions and should apply to security questions. So for the likes of, you know, what was your first make of your first car? Put something bollocks in. Don't actually put in what your first car was because, you know, there could be a photo you've put up on Facebook whenever you were 15, 16 of, oh, just got my new car and it's a picture of you there with it. You know, and an attacker can find that, see it and go, oh, OK, well, that was their first car. They've then got the answer to that security question. You know, mother's maiden name, again, lie. Just put these things in there that are just false and make them almost like individual passwords in, in themselves. But again, obviously, you need to you need to also make sure that you save them and you remember them yourself, which can be the difficulty. But as I said before, the more difficult it is for yourself to do, it's a hell of a lot more difficult for an attacker because then, you know, that information's not out there. And it could even lead to a sort of ongoing effect where, there is, um, let's say, the fake date of birth you put in on Instagram. Say that comes out somehow, whether, I don't know, you haven't set it to private properly or there's a leak or something like that. Well, it doesn't really matter that that's been leaked and that's out there because it's not your real date of birth. So they can get that and they go, oh, okay, cool, I've got this date of birth and I can now use it to try and get in someone's account. But if you've used different date of births for each account, or even on another account where you use your real date of birth, it doesn't match up. 
and then the person can't um, the, the attacker can't access it so last thing I want to talk about um, I, I mentioned smashing security on this before there was an episode where they actually had someone on who was um, I believe a writer and had no security awareness at all um, like didn't have a pin on their phone anything like that and they, they explained sort of some of the things that I've been talking about here in a nice easy to understand manner so I'm going to link that below I suggest you give it a listen even if you're not security conscious and don't care about security podcasts that one in particular I think was quite good especially for an, a newbie um, also if you have any questions or anything like that or you want any advice on security around these types of accounts please um, either put it in the comments or I've got an email address in the description ping me an email and um, if I can help out I, I will so yeah thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you later